Hi there, my name is Kamiz. Uh, I'm the product manager for Impact Scene Analytics, and I'm happy to bring you to no Nokia's digital city here. Uh, as you know, cities are looking for ways to make themselves safer, smarter, more secure, and one of the highest producers of IoT data are security cameras. While security cameras produce quite a bit of IoT data, out of all the data they produce, say 1% of it is relevant data. Meanwhile, these cameras are streaming data to the cloud nonstop 365 days a year, which is very taxing from a storage, compute, and transport perspective. Furthermore, as the cost of cameras goes down, the ubiquity goes up, so this problem is being further exacerbated. This is precisely the challenge that Impact Scene Analytics aims to address. It's based on an algorithm that Bell Labs has developed that uses machine learning to, turn, to determine anomalies based on motion. So for example, you could point a camera at a scene like this, and the software to learn over time what's normal, and when something's abnormal, it's able to flag it for a human review or metadata analysis. There are lots for use cases uh, for uh, anomaly detection. It could be an object left behind at an airport. It could be someone turning the wrong direction on a road, someone going somewhere after hours. Our cities are using these, uh, this data to be able to make their cities uh, safer uh, for, for urban planning, traffic engineering, and surveillance. We have a couple of examples here where we've detected an anomaly. In this case, this is a truck that was stalled on the road. After just a few days of machine learning, our software identified this is an anomaly based on a pixel starting to dwell and it flagged it for review. Here in this case, a bicycle is cut through the middle of the intersection, which is anomalous. Now lots of other video analytics software could do something like this. But the key difference is that they would require humans to create rules that say, OK, people walk on this sidewalk, people walk on this sidewalk, uh, cars drive here, and that's very laborious from a time perspective. Our software, on the other hand, would allow the user to be able to simply upload a bulk list of cameras, and the software would start learning on its own, and then humans can make some, uh, some uh, tweaks to it over time. And in this last example, uh, we were able to detect a, a car that was making an illegal U-turn across six lanes of traffic in the midst of pedestrians, motorcycles, uh, on a pedestrian sidewalk, which is extremely dangerous. And we can detect this in near real time thanks to the performance of our algorithm. The software has three components to it. There's the scene analytics gateway, and this software can be very small or very large. This is a software that's constantly bringing streams into it and determining when that anomaly is found. A small example of this could be a, a box like this. This small box can handle, say, around two streams. You can imagine a traffic intersection with, say, two to four cameras, and those camera streams would terminate right here around this box, and all of the anomalies are sent to the cloud. So now you're drastically reducing the amount of transport, storage, and compute that would otherwise be needed. Once these anomalies are found, they're sent to Impact, which is Nokia's horizontal IoT platform. Impact can collect data from multiple protocols like lightweight M2M, -M, MQTT, uh, narrowband IoT, or, or non-IP data such as uh, LoRa, and expose them to multiple applications. So you can correlate this with, for example, emotion data or sound sensor, uh, those sort of things. Impact then brokers this data to multiple applications. One such application is the Impact CN Lakes dashboard, which I'm showing you here. Uh, here's an example of an anomaly we caught just this week where this car was double parked, and we detected that it is anomalous. We can also send these anomalies to a third party object classifier, as an example. I'd like to show you a little bit of what we're doing uh, here with Google. Uh, for an example, I uploaded a picture of myself, as you can see here. Uh, there are some metadata tags that came back from the picture. Um, now, they were wrong because I wasn't on a vacation, I was on a business trip, but you can see how they came to that conclusion. Over here, I'm showing you an example of a clip that our software would have likely caught. And after, and, and here you can see that Google detected there was smoke in the scene, and then they detected there was a missile in the scene, and then they detected there was an explosion in the scene, which is quite significant. But it's too expensive to send all of these streams up to the cloud to something like Google. So in this case, you should think of our software as kind of a, a pre-filter to determine what's, what warrants metadata analysis or human review. The last thing I'd like to share with you is that while today our software is um, only using the, uh, the Bell Labs algorithm, in the next release we'll be adding more algorithms, some from Nokia and some open source. I'd like to share with you an example of an open source algorithm that's quite popular. Uh, this one's called YOLO. Uh, this says real-time object detection. 
In this case, we've used uh, Bell Labs Worldwide Streams platform to take open source algorithms, onboard the platform, easy create scripting rules that allow you to be able to do IoT video links applications. So what that means is that, uh, for example, I have a camera streaming up here down to this small box here, and I'm using the algorithm from YOLO and the scripting capability from Bell Labs to be able to do a live people count, right? And here's yet another example of how you can turn cameras into smart IoT sensors. And you're safeguarding privacy because instead of storing gobs and gobs of footage, you're only setting either the metadata back or short clips, which are only stored for short periods of time. And the last thing I'd like to uh, share with you is that we had the opportunity today to integrate with the uh, 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 Integrated Operations Center, which is uh, part of a, a bigger scene here. And so, for example, when an anomaly is found, it can be forwarded to the, um, to the Integrated Operations Center for, for real-time analysis and prioritization. And all of this together allows the cities to make themselves safer, smarter, more secure, turning cameras and other things into smart sensors. Thank you for your time.